That means that we're going, right? See the bottom left counter? Right yeah. in the center on the bottom. Oh, there it is. Hey, hey. <laughs> it's Monday. Oh, you got to love Monday. What's that new saying that's going around? Thank God, TGIM, for all those hustlers in the world. Thank God it's Monday. Thank God it's Monday. Well, right. let's do a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Happy Monday. Welcome back to the Jersey Alchemist, friends. I'm your host, Dr. John Gerard Gallucci. And I'm Philip D'Angelo. What's up, pal? Well, you said it's... It's Monday. T-G-I-M. T-G-I-M. Thank God it's Monday. Tig em. Tig em. And uh, I feel pretty good. How about you? Well, I'll tell you what. Here we go. I'm going to start the day with a little story, mm. a vignette a little foolish foolish oh yes oh yes so the agenda from yesterday was that i had to get up early earlier than i'd like you know i did five o'clock in the morning for 32 years four o'clock in the morning for 32 years and um you know once you're out of the firing line as a surgeon you don't have to get up at five o'clock in the morning anymore Okay, good. So that's that's a blessed thing. It's got to be a nice feeling. So I had to get up at like 7.30 today, which pissed me off because now I've gotten soft. And but the agenda was I had to get out of bed, you know, do the dog thing, you know, feed them, let them run, all that stuff, show them love, and then put them back in their indoor outdoor pen and get down to my mom's house, which is over an hour away, to empty her mailbox mom passed dad's gone seven years you know talk about empty nest wow and uh and after that it was shoot over to town hall to pay a big big mother effing mm, property tax past due bill oh, a whopper so I did that, and then the lady behind the glass was actually very nice. Usually the women behind the glass at town hall, ooh. Well, they, I think they average about 40 years uh, they've been there. <laughs> you know, right. they're all like right. blue-haired and But she so. was helpful because as I was thanking her and signing off and saying, that's out of my hair, so was a ton of money, but it's out of my hair. She says, oh, wait, wait, wait. She says, you might want to pay the water bill, too, Ooh. and the sewer bill, too. Ooh. And I was like... Well, she have a button and the door <laughs> shut, and they <laughs> don't was, leave yet. I was gobsmacked. Mm. And I'm like, the water and the sewer. Of course. What was I thinking? Why wouldn't you? What was you? I thinking? Come on. Right? How much is that? 400 bucks here. Mm. 600 bucks there. Okay, mm. here's another $1,000. Yeah, another wow. another grand. When you're up above ten, it you know another grand doesn't really make a difference. Yeah. You know, I, I love I love John. Uh, if I may interrupt, and I yeah. apologize. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I love you know we're all about New Jersey. I mean, people that we know that move out of New Jersey and they pay property taxes. I love asking them. Well, it, all right, whether it's North Carolina, Georgia, Arkansas, anywhere. So, how are your property taxes? And they say like, oh, it's eighteen hundred. I'm like, wow. Eight, <laughs> I go eighteen hundred a month. That's so the same jersey. They go, no, that's eighteen hundred a year. So yeah, it's, for real. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. New Jersey, I think a one bedroom, one bedroom shanty is going to cost you a minimum ten thousand dollars taxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. So back to the story about right. why I feel or felt foolish. So, I get my mom's mail, open up the house, look through it. It's just a disaster that I have yet to dig into because I've got to clean it out. If you've ever done that before, it is not fun. Uh, and there ain't no help. Were there any, like, uh, bill collectors looking to get money, like, you're delinquent, we're going to cut off your service? Oh, cause, of course. You know, because they'll course. just keep coming. All of the medical bills that she accrued over oh. over the last 
seven or eight months of her life. Oh, my oh God, my. tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, hello. Wow. So anyway, I, I lock up, uh, you know, think about the days that were with my dad. He loved that house. So did my mom. Anyway, uh, I, I'm off to town hall. Pay that huge fee. Oh, the water and the sewer. And then I'm off to the local nursing home to see my aunt, my father's sister. God bless her. How old, John? Uh, well, I think this November she'll be 97. Wow. In a wheelchair, kind of heals it around, you know. Mm. God bless her, you know. Um, but she, So I, I'm not going to poke at the people there. My father hated going to nursing homes. My father was a gentle man, but he'd say, this is the island of cast iron hearts. Mm. And I'd say... What? what are you talking about? He'd say, their hearts never stop. The rest of them falls to pieces and their hearts are still going. He says, don't ever put me in one of these places. And I says, I won't, I promise, okay? But that's the way it was. And my aunt and I, we, you know, I had to pay another check for those people because we're going to transport my aunt to, uh, to a restaurant for Easter. Oh, wow. Yeah, God bless her, right? And... Um, and so I, you know, we, we meet up in the dining hall, which is really just kind of like a sitting place when it's not lunchtime or dinner time. And one of the um, residents, the residents, residents, <laughs> I was going to say one of the inmates, no, no, one of the residents comes by on his, you know, walker, you know, and was purposely trying to get our attention by being disturbing. He was, <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my aunt was hurling all sorts of F-bombs at him because mm -hmm. they apparently know mm -hmm. each other and he was jealous that she had a visitor and he didn't, on and on. So when I, you know, said goodbye, okay, see ya, see ya Sunday for Easter and all that jazz, you know, I felt like I wanted to strip my clothes off and walk through a car wash with my own scrub brush. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's just the way you feel. Yeah. So now I get on the Parkway North and I'm heading back up here to the uh, Jersey Alchemist Studios. Yes, yes. World and I, renowned. And I, and I duck into a local quick check um, to get some caffeine so I can be a little bit coherent for the shoot. And uh, I walk up to the counter and somebody sneaks right in front of me. And I'm like, yeah, hmm. of course, of course somebody sneaks right in front of me, right? The old, the old saying is, would you jump in my grave that fast? Hmm. But then I, I said, all right, you know, that's the way the day's been going. You know, I'm hemorrhaging money, people in front of me, cutting me off. Oh, I didn't tell you about the post office. I had to go to the post office in Lakehurst, New Jersey wow. to, to stop my mom's mail. Mm -hmm. Because her mailbox is big and it was stuffed. I pull up. I walk in. There's 26 people waiting in line, all pissed off. And I'm like, I'll be a monkey's uncle. 26 people at a post office with one postal worker behind the counter in reverse. Oh, oh now I'm in trouble because I said where it was, right? Mm. It's not their fault. They should be hiring more people, but really they're disbanding the postal service. If you don't know that, wait for it. So I'm like, you know, oh, my God, not only am I in a rush, but Monday morning, Monday morning on uh, April 12th, 11th, yeah. what, what are they? Yeah. So I just kind of, you know, threw my hands up and I said, what are they, giving something away for free? And there's a little old lady behind me with those big oversized black sunglasses, like maybe she just had like surgery mm -hmm. on her eyes. And she goes, listen, palsy. She goes, today's the deadline for mailing out your taxes, your tax returns, remember? And I said, today? It's next week. <laughs> it's a week from today. So what are they giving away at the post office? She goes, what? She goes, no, it's not. It's today. And I said, it's next week. Three people, including her, beat me to the door. <laughs> they went to the parking lot and hot-footed it out. Like, why would we sit around here? Wow. 
So it, that's what happened. So so here's the punchline. I get to the quick check, an hour and 20 minutes north, locally here from the studios. Somebody jumps in front of me in line, and I'm like, yeah, okay. It's like after you get hit by a truck or two or three, the fourth one doesn't matter. You just go, okay, fine. And it was a guy in, uh, like, painter's garb, like real painter's pants, not not something you'd wear out at a club, covered with paint. His Timberland work boots look like they've got six years of all sorts of paint on them. So he was he was the real thing. And I looked, and he's in there with his child of about 10. And the kid's in pajamas. And the kid has no hair. And the kid has no color to his or her skin. Mm -hmm. And the kid starts pulling on dad's sweatshirt. Dad, can I, can I get this? Can I have this? Can I have this? No, it's no good for you. You know, you're not supposed to eat this or that. And I took in that scene. And I knew exactly what the scene was. I dealt with that professionally for decades. And I felt like a real piece of shit. The New Jersey alchemist let the Stress Bullshit and, and stress and anxiety and the deadlines of the day, the timeline of the day, I let it, I let it permeate me. So the lesson here is, and I promise you, because I've been doing this for years, if I could let that happen to me, it could happen to anybody. So what I did on the spot, unbeknownst to anyone, I'm standing in line behind them, I did an energy transfer on that kid. And... Prayed, prayed, prayed to the greatest physician of all, to Jesus, for that child. Please, Lord Jesus. Please, Lord Jesus, please, Lord, Lord Jesus. Help heal this child. And Jesus' commandments to me, when we met face to face, and yes, it's written about in my book, My Life with God, was you heal him with the love you have for him. Don't ask. You can ask me as Jesus. You can ask Jesus to heal people. Jesus is really going to turn it around on you and you and say, you heal him with the love you have for him. So I've used that over and over again, because how how do you how do you dismiss or deny or shelf a directive that's been given to you face to face by Jesus Christ? So by the way, as a reminder, that's where meditation will get you. So my day was crazy, harried, stressful. It was partially successful, partially unsuccessful because I did walk out of the post office. But I ran into a kid and the situation as a whole made me feel really, really foolish. So I did an energy transfer on that poor kid. God bless that kid. God bless the father. So anyway, I just it, thought I would tell that story. That, that's a great story. It seems like all your buttons were getting pressed today. There's, I, don't, you know, I almost made another mistake. Really? I was almost going to say there's no button left unpushed. Mm. That would have been really stupid. Yeah. yeah. Because ever... there's always buttons to push. You know, uh, it's funny you say that because when uh, I was going through a particu particularly tough time in my life, divorce, my mother was uh, dying in a hospital. I was in a, uh, a almost a head-on uh, collision with my car, okay? Now, you just think things couldn't get any worse. So when that happened, I actually kicked the door open of the car. I was okay, a little shaken up. I mean, there was an accident. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Head-on yeah. head collision just about with another guy. I hit the front. He decided to do a U-turn, like right in front of me, oh. and then come directly in my lane. So uh, what's wrong with that? Nah, you know, nothing. And then he lied about it, but they have tapes. But I kicked open the door and I looked up at the skies and I said, "That's all you got?" Referring to God, like mm -hmm. that's all you got. You're yes. gonna have to do better than that. Right. Which was a big mistake. I'm not dead yet. Yeah, which was a big mistake because it did get a lot tougher from there. But yeah. <laughs> so be careful when you say like, you know, uh, oh, another bundle or that's God, it. You are so right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never met. I don't even like telling that story because it seems like every time I tell that story, you know, something happens. Can, can, it, <sighs> Phil 
we could talk. We're doing these one-hour videos, right? Yeah. We could go six hours at a shot, I'm convinced. Oh, right? absolutely. Just break them up at the six different uh, videos. You were alluding to the fact, don't, don't point your finger to the universe. Yes. Don't, don't, um, challenge, don't challenge. There was another word in there, you know, about provoke, whatever. Instigate. Yeah. Instigate, whatever. So I, I, you know, I have a bit of a story. It's a short story. My ex-wife and I decided to go for a weekend. I think my mom and dad, of course, were still alive and they, they, they were going to come and babysit the kids for the weekend. And we went to Foxwoods Casino and whatever, up in Connecticut somewhere. For those of you from the West Coast that don't know. And Foxwoods was a place where they've got big venues, they've got headliners, they have um, nice spot. a venue where they're, you know, they would do like, you know, um, championship boxing cards, you know, headliners. I don't know if Mike Tyson ever fought at Foxwoods, but a lot of other people did. So, and, and when you're in that place, it's out in the woods and it's apparently owned by one of the indigenous tribes. You could, you could lose yourself for a year in that place. It's so big. It's like three or four times the size of an airport. It just goes on and on and on and on. Like you could stay there a whole week and, and not, not get bored. So we had such a good time. Dining, dancing, shopping, watching headliner shows, all of that stuff. And on the way out of that place, it had rained tarantulally the entire weekend, but it didn't matter because we were in this like bubble. It was its own universe. So on the way out, there's this long winding road that goes through the woods to the main highway to come home. I looked up and the sun was shining. There were rays of sun. And I was so inspired by the time that we had together. What do you think I did? Talk about stupid. I shook my fist mm. up to the sky and I said, nothing will ever get between my wife and I. Mm. Nothing. Wow. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, listen. Like, that's provoking the universe. Oh, like, that's really challenging. You're issuing a challenge. And that challenge was met because... Of the, <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> because <laughs> the, the the journey, I mean, we talk about journeys a lot on this podcast. I mean, the journey um, and of a relationship. I mean, think about how long were you and your ex from dating to the end were together. Oh. I think 26 years. Yeah. My, me and my ex and I was 29 years altogether. Couldn't make it to the finish line. So that journey with its many ups and downs, I mean, at some point. You oh, know, no, I think it was over 30 years. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. But you have to look on the bright side. You have three great kids. I do. You know, I have... And I just saw the ex yesterday. Oh. I picked my, picked my son up. He still lives in his bedroom, God bless him. Mm -hmm. And, um, didn't you see him uh, for dinner this weekend? Yeah, I picked him up yesterday, and we went to the our favorite Greek restaurant. Oh. I'll give it a plug. Twelve Islands, um, Very Greek nice. Taverna in Sterling, New Jersey. Uh, love the owners, love the managers, love the wait the waiters, waitresses, and the food. Yowza, yowza! I have no reason to deal with TSA and tickets and expensive hotels and going to Greece. Because all I got to do is go to 12 Islands Greek Taverna in Sterling, New Jersey. That, and that's not a paid commercial. That's coming from my heart. Mm. Uh, so I picked my son up. Yeah. And down the long street came Mama, the ex, walking the dog, Trooper. And Trooper was the family Shih Tzu when I was mm. still there living with her and married to her. And uh, Trooper on... Um, March 23rd, which is also my sister-in-law's birthday, Trooper turned 16. Wow. And, you know, the poor little guy, he's so cute. He's not blind, but he's stone-cold deaf. And I just really got reminiscent. So, you know, divorces are never fun. I shouldn't say that. For some people, they are. 
you know, but not for me, and I don't think for you. No, right? no, no. I feel like uh, right. I didn't finish the race. Right, was, but I can say I can say good. now, and I can say it on this video that uh, that my ex-wife and I have, a, I think, a very good relationship, and uh, and God bless. And I, you know, I really at this stage, at this juncture, I have absolutely no complaints, none. Of well, course, when you're in the throes of it, well, both sides are both sides have flamethrowers. Yeah, it's not pretty, and it just seems like the only people that um, get any, get anything out of a divorce are attorneys. Oh yeah, you know. And uh, I ended up um, because uh, financially I was going through a tough time. I ended up uh, defending myself or representing myself at the, in the courthouse of the divorce, and so. I did okay. You you represented yourself. I represented. That guy? I was that guy. I represented myself. You know, so uh, her lawyer was How very. How is it that you're even wearing a shirt? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I paid. I paid. You went up me. against an attorney. I didn't go up against anything. Uh, it was very. You used a. Uh, we knew what was going to happen. What's the word I'm looking for? What? Not you know when you go to a mediator. Yeah. Is that what you did? No, we were in the throes, but before that, we mediated. I mean, I was not in the mood. At some point, you just have to stop fighting, correct? I mean, at well, some point, the flamethrower runs out of uh, fuel, yeah. jet fuel. Right. So uh, jet fuel. so I was the one that said, you know what? This is it. I just cut everything. Stopped it. Uh, it is what it is. Right. This is what's going to happen. End of story. And that's right. what happened, you know? Yeah put myself in a very very tough position but you know what what's life without a few tough positions you're right you know you're absolutely right and that was it we did it for the greater good you know the kids you know you think about the kids and uh you know so you don't want to do that so speaking of lawyers in tough positions shall we spin the wheel of uh the wheel of fate today absolutely bones what do you think i don't say anything just yeah, telepathy. I know. You want me to spin the wheel. But you really want to talk about osteoporosis. I know it. Mm, yeah. Calcium. Right. All right. So, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Let's give it a try. Ready, Gangula? Tour. There's that Jersey boardwalk sound okay. that we love. <laughs> Marriage and divorce. Are you Wait a minute. kidding me? Oh. My gosh. Are you kidding well, Wait me? a minute. We, I, we just did that. Isn't that crazy? Wow. That's pretty amazing. That is pretty that's amazing. That's a little bit supernatural. <laughs> Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael. Well, you know what? Maybe we're supposed to talk on the topic, not from such a negative side, John. Maybe we're supposed to just, maybe we can enlighten somebody that maybe is going through a divorce right now. And I know a couple people that are going through a divorce right now. You mean you want to talk about the sunny side of divorce? <laughs> Not the sunny side, but there is the sun will come up tomorrow. So no matter how dark it is, let's face it. The worst thing about divorce is that family unit that lived together, slept together, ate together, yeah. vacationed together. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even about a man and a woman. It was about, in my case, the four, in your case, the five. I mean, all of a sudden that exploded, and that wasn't that wasn't like the world. An option the world, uh, the world gets torpedoed, and if it's a ship, it it you know it never lists and sinks sideways. It does this and then yeah. right down to the bottom. And um, I think, you know, it's very interesting. But speaking of how the universe. was aware of the fact that we went into marriage and divorce and we spin the wheel of destiny, destiny. the wheel of faith and marriage and divorce comes up. That's, really? okay, that right, is amazing. Right. So, um, so you know what I'm saying? John? So that unit isn't there anymore. So you feel like a piece of you is missing. It's gone. Totally. But let's just consider this. Let's just step back here. Right. What exactly is marriage? Right, because how long has marriage been an institution? That's kind of an expected thing. Was marriage an institution um, during the Greek, hmm. the days of the Greek Empire? Was marriage an expected endeavor for the great Persian Empire? 
Hmm. I don't know. Let's hear it in the comments. Whoever is an historian on the Persian and the Greek empires, you know, the, the people people hooked up with each other, and they, I think, stayed with each other for the most part. And I know that in ancient times, days of Jesus, even all the way back to the days of Moses, the ancient Hebrews certainly married, right? Because Jesus went to the wedding at Cana and turned water to wine. And, um, okay. and if you were caught, if you were caught hooking up and you weren't married, I don't know what would happen if you were a guy, but if you were a woman, I think you got stoned. Or eat, and and we're not talking about a spliff or a reefer, mm. you know. Every it, you know it. I love side rabbit holes. That's what makes mm -hmm. the conversation good. If if anybody here watching thinks they know what a stoning is, maybe you do, but I didn't know until I saw, of course, the scene from um, the Life of Brian, Monty Python, right, mm -hmm. where they finally stoned John Cleese <laughs> as the chief Pharisee at the end of that segment. Yeah, yeah. But what do they do at the end of the segment? Not only did they throw stones at him and it knocks you down and whatnot and it injures you, then they drag a big, huge boulder over and, <clears throat> and let it go on your head and they squash your head. Now, I thought that that was just a comedic expression of the uh, Monty Python crew. Oh no, that's the truth. And unfortunately, I ran across a stoning video on YouTube about three years ago where a 12 year old girl was stoned to death in some the, country. In the, in, yeah, in the Middle East. And um, it's pretty ugly. It's not just a matter of getting hit with softball sized rocks and stones that knocks you down to the ground. Now you could you could run, but they're only gonna chase you and probably cut your head off anyway. Oh, cheery. But then when you're down and out, they've got a big, huge boulder or something that's in the in the wings waiting and then a whole bunch of people drop it on your head and smash all that's, up. That's the encore. Yeah, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty disgusting. Um, mm. So back then, if you got caught, adult, if you were an adulteress, an adulteress, a woman, and you got caught having sex outside your marriage, I'm pretty sure there was a stoning with your name on it. I don't know what would happen to the guy. Maybe the guy gets excommunicated, mm. but they don't stone him. I think I read that somewhere. I don't know. Just think of your the family tree, John, your history. Nobody in my family was divorced. You know, you're going back to your grandparents, your aunts and uncles, uh, your our parents. Uh, but my generation and my cousins, they're, they're, we're out there. I mean, we're divorced. It was well, definitely our generation that it's, it's interesting. started that's, that. That's kind of why I thought, well, how far back does a real marriage obligation, commitment go? And the answer is, I actually don't know the answer to that. And... Mm. So, like I said, put it in the comments, please, if, if you know, or even if you don't know, or if you want to get comedic, say something funny and stupid. That's okay. That'll make the comments fun to go through. Uh, but I've got this suspicion that I don't know about marriages of today. I just don't know. I mean, the divorce rate is over 50% aren't going to make it. You know what I see? And I could be completely wrong but I don't think I am. Nope. The youngins that are getting married today, I see immediately imbalance. Imbalance, I do. Yeah. And the power always lies with the missus and not the mister. So all of the females out there would be slamming the table saying, it's about time. Hmm. Well, maybe it is about time, but you know something? How far are you going to get on a ship that's listing and tilting all the way over to one side? The answer is you ain't getting very far. So you, if, if that's how you start off, you better figure out immediately how you're going to fare taking care of the kids that might come out of that marriage if you go it alone, if a divorce is on the way. Because unless there's a healthy balance, it ain't going to last. John, let's go even before the marriage. 
I mean, think how things have changed, uh, and there's a definitely a financial burden. Bachelor parties, okay, now they're destination bachelor parties. Oh. Destination. Oh, I think that's a bad idea. Destination bachelorette parties. And then there's weddings where they get married on the island. Oh, destination uh, weddings. Destination weddings, yeah. I mean, come on. For me to get married in the next town was a big deal. My cousin, my cousin Nikki got married in Portugal. Yeah. So, I mean, who do you invite there? So now you have to buy, you know, if it's a female, she got to buy a dress. If you're in the wedding party, you got to pay for a tux. Now you got to pay for plane tickets. Now you got, I mean, that's a lot and of. Then you got to go barefoot through TSA at Newark Airport. <laughs> <laughs> then you got to go barefoot through TSA. I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot of, you're asking a lot of your guests, you know, and, yeah, then, a, right. and then a gratuity. Well, you know what they did? They got married in Portugal in some, you know, some beautiful setting. And then they had a wedding back here. Oh, okay. Because his wife is Portuguese, and mm. there, there was this unbelievable spread in a venue uh, in, um, I think, Hillside, New Jersey. I think Hillside, New Jersey. I think. Well, if you've been to a Portuguese restaurant, they feed you like there's no tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Absolutely. So, yeah, so the rest of the people who really, you know, weren't going to be able to make it, you know, TSA, Airplane, Portugal, you know, they had a second full-on spread wedding back here in jersey and, and you know that was it was a lot of fun it was great wow. lots of fun and all the pressure was off for them sure you know, i can yeah. remember when i got married i don't remember any of it hmm. it was so much i got married on long island and everybody from my side of the marriage took tour buses they all met in in a the supermarket parking lot behind our house and they they piled onto tour buses and it took them all the way out because there were a lot of elderly people back then and they're all gone now god bless them mm -hmm. but you can't expect them to negotiate traffic on a weekend through manhattan out to long island and then at the end of the night all the way back successfully no, no. so matter. we set up the tour we had like i think three tour buses mm. yeah it was it was fun did yeah. anybody from the other side come? I mean, in Italy? I had people well, no. from Italy that had, oh, they had to be there. Well, the only person at the wedding, I think this is true, that was actually, that had lived in Italy, oddly enough. The ex was Jewish. Of course, I'm not. And we couldn't come to terms regarding um, the fact that one of my grandmother's best friends was a local bishop. So it got a little bit rough. There was horn locking and friction. Mm. And my sister-in-law came up with the idea that we would get married by a cantor in the venue. And the cantor had lived in Italy and he spoke Italian. Hmm. That's as close as anybody at my, wow. you know, hundreds of people at the wedding. Yeah. You know? And uh, that was a little bit. That's getting popular, too, where the ceremony is not happening in a traditional church or synagogue. It's happening in, at the venue. Uh, and that's how they start their uh, their journey together as a right. husband and wife. Right. You know, my, uh, and then there's, you know, you get married in a church and then there's the limo. I mean, the, you know, how many limos do you have to have in the wedding parties? How many right. people in the wedding party? My cousin got married. His wedding party limo, we drove through White Castle driving. <laughs> okay? Shows you where his mindset was at. I didn't mind. Is that where the reception was? No, <laughs> no but it does, I mean, that was okay by me. But, uh, yeah, that's they were big fans of White Castle. and they, I mean, that was fun. That's and they're still fun. married to this day, over 30 really? years. God bless them. Wow. Probably still going to White House. So I, I'd like to say something about marriage and divorce. Okay. When you get married, you had really better think it out before you get married. And if you're married um, because, geez, we've been dating for seven years, you know, and there's nobody else out there. And every time I walk into a bar or a club, there are a bunch of creeps. Mm. You know, and that's on either, on behalf of either the, the girl or the guy, right? Don't get married if you don't really want to get married. You know how many people have told me, I knew it was wrong the day before the wedding. Mm. 
Yeah. I didn't know how to get out of it. So you many people. You stupid. I know, but you know, you got thousands of dollars and you got hundreds of people, uh, unless you're Indian. I got a bunch of Indian friends from work and you know, 800 people at the wedding, a thousand people at the wedding. What are you going to do? Call it off the day before? <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> Call it off. So really what I, the, the point I wanted to make is, um, get married for the right reasons, get married for the right reasons, but, but you really need to put your ego and we're going to talk about the ego a lot on this podcast, the Jersey alchemist, because the ego is that tiger or that lion that needs to be tamed. You need to be a, an ego tamer. That's what this is all about. So if you can't put your ego in a lockbox, I didn't say to kill it. We still need the ego, right? It's useful. It's purposeful. But don't let it run your life. Um, yeah. So There's so, that saying, leave your ego at the door. Leave your ego at the door. So, okay, let's talk about this, okay? So a guy and a girl, they have a career before they get married, before they meet each other. And she's happy that this guy that's cute, that now she's dating beyond the threshold. What's the threshold for before you do this? Oh, uh, and the microphone's hiding. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I think it's third date. <laughs> I think if nowadays or 20 years ago, 30 years ago, we got know. married. Let's, I mean, it's two different worlds. Let's John. just let's just be fanciful and say that the third date is when the plugs going in the socket. OK, so hopefully, hopefully the girl has ideations that this could be the guy. And hopefully the guy has the same ideation that. This could be the gal, just like the gal mm. that married dear own dad. Really? Mm. Right. Okay. So, but the point is, you both got a career. You've got to respect the other's position. You've got to respect their career. What would make you think that a marriage is going to work if at some point down the road you have a kid or two or three, and then it's, I'm, oh, I can't compromise my position. I'm well known up and down the eastern seaboard for what I do. So you are going to forfeit your career and you are going to stay home and you are going to do the laundry and vacuum the fucking rugs. Beep, oop, too late on the beep. And you are going to do the laundry and fold my laundry because I make more money than you. Hey, listen, whether it's the guy or the girl, you're smoking bad dope. Why would you want to foster that kind of thinking in a marriage where there's one, two, three, four kids that depend on mom and dad, dad and mom? You got to come together. And you know something? If the thought had never occurred to you, you know what? Get an au pair. Hire a live-in. Do something like that. And you know what? Take an hour of your weekend when you're not working to run around and clean the house. You know, running around and cleaning the house for an hour each weekend isn't that difficult and it keeps things moving in the right direction. But if you think your wife is going to stay at home after working her ass off and building up a career because you think that it should matter that you make $50,000 a year more than her, or maybe you make $6,000 a year more than her, or $200,000 a year more than her. You're killing her, or you're killing him, because you guys ventured into this career for a reason. You had it in your heart and your mind. So guess what? It's going to cost you to save your marriage. The au pair, the live-in nanny. That's the solution. Don't go it alone. Now, the best way to go ahead is to do it like they did in the old days. And I was a beneficiary, a finish beneficiary of this kind of thing. I was um, still in high school, and then maybe through my mid twenties. What then? I 
was out permanently with, with uh, dental school and medical school and all of that jazz. But my, my mother's mother, her husband passed, she sold the house, and she built a mother-daughter suite on the back of our house. And some of the, and I think I said this on a previous episode, some of the b most blessed days of my life were hanging out with my granny, coming home with a whopping effing, oh, I drank too much. Who's there at three o'clock in the morning? The dog and grandma. The next day, when you're so hungover on Thanksgiving because you, you drank 32 shots of wild turkey at the local gin mill, you should be dead, God forbid. Don't try this at home. Uh, who was there? My grandma was there. And the dog. The dog was looking at me empathetically. And my grandmother was laughing at me. Because remember, my grandmother's husband, my biologic grandfather, was a gangster who owned speakeasies. So she had seen that kind of thing over and over and over and over again. And she said to me, she whispered into my ear, she says, here, sip this. It's a little Coca-Cola. She put an ice pack on my head and she said, I'm glad this happened to you. You deserve this. How stupid could you be? And I said, Grandma, after the sixth shot, I didn't know what I was doing. Hmm. And she says, well, don't forget this. Yeah. And you still have it. Look at the rabbit hole I went down and it, the wheel said marriage and divorce. Yeah, John, <laughs> I think you touched on something. Something that I can't get used to nowadays is you know listen there's a lot of situations mom and dad are both working yeah and you know what not everybody has a grandmother right or or some, a relative close by right it breaks my heart when i see daycare centers and these young children getting dropped off some of them kicking and screaming they don't want to get dropped off right and and i get it the parents look so stressed you know, it's like because they've got to get to work, the, the mothers and the fathers, and they're like, it some, seems like they're just like here. And I know the most important for formation where a child is formed that emotionally is when they're, you know, from an infant to like five. Yeah. You know, that's, that's more true than than the viewers could imagine. I'd like, you know, every once in a while, I'm going to give you a homework assignment, mm. not to bust your chops. But to edify you, because um, there's the notion out there um, that any production worth its salt should do at least three things. And uh, there is a, a movie producer, director, actor whom I love, Mel Gibson. Love you. And he says every, every production should administer the three E's. It should entertain, it should elevate and educate. You can switch in enlighten, but I think the elevation is really enlightenment. So get something good out of it, right? If you're gonna watch a, a movie, come away feeling a bit elevated and enlightened. You gotta be entertained. And at the same time, it doesn't hurt to be a little educated by it too. Mm. So. Yeah. You know, it's sad when those kids get dropped off like that. It just breaks my heart every time. Right. You know? Yeah, no. So, um... What's the answer? There is no answer. You need two salaries. When we grew up, yeah. you know, it was a one-salary household that, that you could survive in. And you got the best upbringing you could imagine. Absolutely. And, and I guess those were the segue years in the United States from, like, you know, people not people starving to death during during the depression, to now where you know the people that are educating our kids are uh, Intel co-opted Hollywood producers mm. or TV producers, right? Come on, just turn on the news and look at the shit that they shovel. You know what? You know what, let me tell you, here, this goes out to all of the, the network news executives, producers, directors. You know what you are? You're nothing but a garbage company to me. You're a bunch of haulers that, that haul shit and trash. And you know what your biggest function is? Yeah, back up, back it up, back it up. Okay, 
pull the lever, there goes the truck, and all you do every time you're on is dump a, a gigantor load of shit onto people. So guess what? Hmm. Screw yourselves. John, Westfield, New Jersey, September. Uh, Governor Murphy just signed a, a law allowing the mayor to introduce um, to the children at the youngest age possible uh, a lot of uh, sexual uh, identifications. Well, what's the backstory on him? Doesn't he have a backstory? Who? Murphy? Him, yeah. I don't know. What is the backstory? I think he got caught Oh in yeah. a compromising position. Listen, every politician that's worth their salt mm. is caught one way or another in a compromising position. Remember the scene from Godfather 2? Oh, yeah. Where Senator. They, they, they wanted to get the Senator to sign a bill or something. And, you know, you, know, you greasy guineas go back to New York. Blah, 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 blah. Next thing you know, he's getting wined and dined. And then after that, he's in a whorehouse. And he's in a whorehouse in a compromising position. Kind of reminds me of mm. Jeffrey Epstein. And then the door gets kicked in and all of the big name photographers from all of the news agencies, foof, 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 boom. Guess what? Next scene, next day, he's signing the bill that he wouldn't sign beforehand. Mm. Life is leverage. Life is leverage. So these son of a bitches are either getting paid off, they're blackmailed, uh, they're compromised, or they're just rotten, evil pieces of shit that don't need to be co-opted and blackmailed or paid off. They're doing it because they, they just choose to do it. That's who has got us in the bag of shit that we're in. Ah, boy, I'll tell you, that would have come out regardless of the, the wheel of destiny mm -hmm. and, and what the topic was. How do we pull this back to marriage and divorce? And then we got to alchemize it because we're at 46 minutes. Well, John, it seems to, <laughs> it seems to me, wow, that was all in one breath too. Right. That's impressive. <laughs> it seems to me that the uh, the attack is definitely geared towards children. I mean, think about it if you're a kid. You know, God isn't, not everybody's as spiritual as they used to be, uh, right? That's number one. Number two, there there's no more innocence with these, with these uh, instruments we have here called a cell phone. Yeah. There's all kind of stuff that you can, a child can get on there. I mean, right. parents right. are not home. There's divorce. I mean, it's a tough battle for kids. You really have, as a parent, as a parent, you really have to, you know, you know what? I love old school stuff. Right. Old school is the rule. Right. It was, it worked for a reason. Yeah. Well, yeah. But you know something? I think that's the, uh, that's in there in the mix regarding the spiritual warfare that we find ourselves in. Mm. You know, well, we are definitely in the throes of spiritual warfare. Ready? Come on, Archangel. Michael, he's got a fly. flying around with his wings. Okay, we need Listen, We need your help, and it's not a joke. We need your help. In a, okay, in a big and, way. And you know something, you know something, for the people who think that um, a a relatively conservative upbringing for kids is an abomination. Where do you want this to go? Where do you see your, the lives of your kids going? Where is society going if we're going to live like uh, the chick from the first season of Breaking Bad? But if you haven't seen that, you know, daddy's working his ass off. He's got money. He owns apartment complexes and, and rents houses. And she's in there smoking crystal meth and then ends up lying through her teeth to the old man and hooks up with of course one of the lead scumbags of, of mm. the show and what what happens well she chokes on her vomit while she's stoned out of her banana and she dies and she dies who's held accountable for that I don't know but for God's sakes, think of the consequences of bringing up children with no boundaries. It ain't going to end well, kids. It ain't going to end well. Anyway, 
is it time to alchemize? Yeah, let's alchemize. Yeah, that was, okay. that's a All heavy right. topic so today. I, I, well, yeah, we went here and there and everywhere, but hey, this is what we do on the Jersey Alchemist. You know, what that's comes right. to mind comes to mind, and then it's on our lips. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, <sighs> there are people who are dragging society, not just in the United States, dragging it into hell in a handbasket. Your job, friends. Yes, you have homework, and I forgot to get back to the homework thing. All right, the homework for, the day, for today is, please, please, if you haven't started to pray, you don't need to be in a temple, a synagogue, a church. You don't need to be on a kneeler, like we said before. Clear off a little space in your house, maybe up in your bedroom, somewhere away from the kids. Put a candle there. And uh, as a disclaimer, because I don't want you to burn down your house, get an LCD candle, okay? And learn how to pray in front of that candle. And the candle has been used for thousands of years as something that amplifies the energy of the prayers. And remember, life is all about energy. So if you shoot rockets of energy into the universe with the candle powering it with your emotions really really powering it you turn the heads of the deities that you pray to who are you praying to you're praying to god you're praying to the creator it doesn't matter your religion it doesn't matter even if you're an atheist come to a point where you have got to say that the end all to the universe can't be your local cable news network it's not a politician it's not. It's not a globalist corporate leader. It's not a big tech jerk off. It isn't. It's you. Why? Because the kingdom of God is within you. Now do I sound like a preacher? Great. Tough shit. Now do I sound like a preacher because I said tough shit? No. I'm trying to wake you up. If I could smack you in the face from here, I would. Our salvation is in your hands and nobody else's. You can pray to whoever you're going to pray to, but you know something? Your God centers right in here. Stoke a furnace. Stoke a furnace and pray. What are you going to pray for? Pray for the end of this stupid war that's going on. Pray for the end of the fake news that's been plaguing us for, for decades and decades and decades. Pray for the politicians. I don't think the politicians that have been around for 10, 20, 30, 40 years are ever going to change. I don't. Pray that the next wave of politicians have better sense, have a bigger heart center, that listen to their hearts instead of their egos. Pray that the politicians that are going to make things better because they will with your help, pray that they're here in service of others instead of being fat pig greedy service to self hogs because that's what they've been for far too long and yes they contrive the wars and yes millions of people die why because of the stroke of the pen of a politician you've got to be kidding me people it's on you it's not on them we allowed them to screw up the world now it's in your hands don't wait don't wait it's not, it's, they're not going to help you. All right. Bring it so back. That's all I really wanted to say. Okay. Um, God bless you all. Um, thank you for tuning in to the Jersey Alchemist. Remember what an alchemist does. An alchemist turns lead to gold, turns fear to love. See you next time. Great job, Johnny. Well said. Thank you. If you like what we're doing, press the like button and subscribe. Jersey Alchemist. Dynamite, just Peace. hit the red button, brother.